winning every invisible battle. Do you believe there is a realm that is different from the physical realm where we all exist presently? If you do, do you believe that this invisible realm has opponents and forces that seek constantly to control or triumph over people? Well, Apostle Paul, who wrote a huge part of the New Testament, did. And this is why he says in Ephesians 6 verse 12 amplified that, Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly or supernatural places. What he means here is that certain forces can oppose us and the fact that we can't see them physically does not erase their existence. It is very possible for something to stop advancement and create barriers even though they are invisible to you and I. The story of creation in Genesis 1 verses 1 to 2 amplified also shows us clearly that there's a spiritual realm that pre-existed before this world that we are familiar with. It says, in the beginning God, Elohim, created by forming from nothing the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and void, or a waste and emptiness, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, primeval ocean that covered the unformed earth. The Spirit of God was moving, hovering or brooding over the face of the waters. So, who controls the forces behind all these invisible barriers that rise up time and time again? Let's look at two scriptures to answer this question. The first scripture is Revelation 12 verses 7 to 9 amplified. It says, And war broke out in heaven, Michael the archangel and his angels waging war with the dragon. The dragon and his angels fought, but they were not strong enough and did not prevail and there was no longer a place found for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, the age-old serpent who is called the devil and Satan, he who continually deceives and seduces the entire inhabited world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. Satan and his demonic angels were evicted from heaven because his mind got lifted up. They were thrown down to the earth, so even though we cannot see them with our physical eyes, we cannot deny their activities and influences on humanity. Another scripture is Isaiah 14 verses 12 to 17 amplified. It says, How you have fallen from heaven, O star of the morning, light bringer, son of the dawn! You have been cut down to the ground, you who have weakened the nations, king of Babylon! But you said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of assembly in the remote parts of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. But, in fact, you will be brought down to Sheol, to the remote recesses of the pit, the region of the dead. Those who see you will gaze at you. They will consider you, saying, is this the man who made the earth tremble, who shook kingdoms, who made the world like a wilderness and overthrew its cities, who did not permit his prisoners to return home? This establishes the fact that Satan and his demonic angels are behind all the invisible battles that we face but can't put a finger on it. This could come as unexplained disagreements in families, actions or addictions that are harmful to us, nightmares or even ailments that are constantly exerting upon us, and so much more. John 10 verse 10 Amplified The thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it in abundance, to the full, till it overflows. We must never become so natural as believers that we forget that there is an invisible but relentless thief whose mission is evil and destructive. The mandate of the devil and his demons remains chaos and havoc, no matter the decade, age or generation that is on the earth. Revelation 7 verses 1 to 3 Amplified After this I saw four angels stationed at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth so that no wind could blow on the earth or on the sea or on any tree. 
Then I saw another angel coming up from the rising of the sun, holding the seal of the living God. And with a loud voice, he called out to the four angels to whom it was granted to have authority and power to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth, nor the sea, nor the trees, until we seal or mark the bondservants of our God on their foreheads. This adversary that wars against us is wickedness personified. He will stop at nothing to create barriers between us and the fullness of God's purpose for our lives. Revelation 6 verses 3 and 4 Amplified When he, the Lamb, broke the second seal, I heard the second living creature call out, Come! And another, a fiery red horse of bloodshed came out, and its rider was empowered to take peace from the earth so that men would slaughter one another and a great sword of war and violent death was given to him. The irony of invisible battles is that the adversary does not play fair and he really doesn't care that we can't see his horde with our physical eyes. But thankfully, by the precious blood of Jesus and his powerful name, we can constantly win against those forces of darkness. This is what Ephesians 6 verses 12 to 18 Amplified is about. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the forces of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural places. Therefore, put on the complete armor of God, so that you will be able to successfully resist and stand your ground in the evil day of danger, and having done everything that the crisis demands, to stand firm in your place, fully prepared, immovable, victorious. So stand firm and hold your ground, having tightened the wide band of truth, personal integrity, moral courage around your waist, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, an upright heart, and having strapped on your feet the gospel of peace in preparation to face the enemy with firm-footed stability, and the readiness produced by the good news. Above all, lift up the protective shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. With all prayer and petition, pray with specific requests at all times, on every occasion and in every season in the Spirit. And with this in view, stay alert with all perseverance and petition interceding in prayer for all God's people. We must rejoice because God has shown us how to subdue Satan in battle even though we can't see him. Isaiah 14 verses 1 to 10 Amplified says, For the Lord will have compassion on Jacob, the captives in Babylon, and will again choose Israel and will settle them in their own land. Foreigners or Gentiles will join them as proselytes and will attach themselves to the house of Jacob, Israel. The peoples will take them along and bring them to their own place, Judea, and the house of Israel will possess them as an inheritance in the land of the Lord as male and female servants. And they will take captive those whose captives they have been, and they will rule over their former oppressors. And it will be in the day when the Lord gives you rest from your pain and turmoil and from the harsh service in which you have been enslaved, that you will take up this taunt against the king of Babylon and say, How the oppressor has ceased his insolence, and how the fury has ceased. The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked, the scepter of the tyrant rulers which used to strike the peoples in anger with incessant blows, which subdued and ruled the nations in wrath with unrelenting persecution. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break into shouts of joy. Even the cypress trees rejoice over you, kings of Babylon. Even the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since you are laid low, no woodcutter comes against us. Sheol below is excited about you to meet you when you come, you tyrant of Babylon. It stirs up the spirits of the dead to greet you. All the leaders of the earth, it raises all the kings of the nations from their thrones in astonishment at your fall. All of them will respond tauntingly and say to you, You have become as weak as we are. You have become like us. 
we must view the devil as a defeated foe that continues to rage across the earth, but still one who bows out when a child of God that knows their position and authority steps into the room. Luke 10 verses 18 to 20 Amplified says, He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. Listen carefully. I have given you authority that you now possess to tread on serpents and scorpions, and the ability to exercise authority over all the power of the enemy, Satan. And nothing will in any way harm you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven. The question that still boggles the mind of many Christians is, why does he still have access to block and torment believers? But there are two main reasons for this. 1. Spiritual ignorance. Hosea 4 verse 6 Amplified says, My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. We are cheated so often when we do not know God's will or if we do not know how to walk in it. Isaiah 5 verse 13 Amplified Therefore, my people go into exile because they lack knowledge of God, and their honorable men are famished, and their common people are parched with thirst. From these verses, it is obvious that the greatest weapon the devil takes advantage of is the spiritual ignorance of believers. When you don't know that you've been given power, there's no way you can make use of the power. 2. Demonic Attacks Let's examine these two scriptures to see how demonic attacks happen. Matthew 13 verses 24 to 28 Amplified says, Jesus gave them another parable to consider, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed seeds resembling wheat among the wheat and went away. So when the plant sprouted and formed again, the weeds appeared also. The servants of the owner came to him and said, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? Then how does it have weeds in it? He replied to them, An enemy has done this. The servants asked him, Then do you want us to go and pull them out? The second scripture is 1 Corinthians 16 verse 9 Amplified, and it says, Because a wide door for effective service has opened to me, in Ephesus, a proming opportunity, and there are many adversaries. These demons come around looking for loopholes around our lives to see whether they can penetrate and attack family, business, or projects believers embark upon. But even with these direct schemes from devils, we can still subdue them if we have the light of God and the Word of God dwelling richly in us. With spiritual light, darkness always bows out in battle. John 1 verses 4, 5, and 9 Amplified say, in him was life, and the power to bestow life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, and the darkness did not understand it, or overpower it, or appropriate it, or absorb it, and is unreceptive to it. There it was, the true light, the genuine, perfect, steadfast light, which, coming into the world, enlightens everyone. However, we must understand that we only grow in light, by studying and meditating on the Word of God. It is spiritual illumination that puts us in charge over the forces of darkness. These steps are important if we must be truly lighted so that we can win in any confrontation against these invisible foes and the barriers or battles they stir up. 1. Pray for access to light, and as the light grows, we grow into the realm of illumination so that darkness can lose the battles to us. 2. We must seek for light from anointed materials and the Bible. This helps us to understand who we are easily, and, by that understanding of our rights, we can win over every invisible battle and even visible barriers. Let us pray. Jesus, you remain the King of Kings and the one who is able to win in every realm, whether spiritual or physical. Thank you for the authority you have given me in your name, blood, and your word to subdue every force of darkness. In the name of Jesus, I ask that you release upon me the grace to grow in light so that every obstacle organized by the adversary will crumble. Amen.